And they just like, we terminate your contract. So, and I was like, what? <laughs> Absolutely shocked. Yeah. Like, they re realized what happened and I was like, oh my God, I don't have a job. I mean, like the sentence was like, it's definitely the worst year to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> Noga Karem, welcome back to the Downtime Podcast. It's been um, a little while since we last chatted on the show. It was October 2021, believe it or not, in mm. in Leithen. Uh, a lot of water under the bridge since then, but I've noticed you spent a little bit of time on a downhill bike since we last chatted, which kind of caught me by <laughs> surprise. Um, talk, talk us through that. Like, What, what drove you to, um, to get onto a downhill bike? And is it something you rode like, in the past, or is this a new thing for you? Yeah, so first, thanks for hosting me again. I'm happy to be here. Uh, yeah, so as for downhill, it's actually, that was my first love mm -hmm. with uh, riding. Uh, at home, there wasn't really a big downhill scene, but there were a couple races and uh, that's how I started, more with jumps and downhill. I don't know if you can call it downhill, but <laughs> wannabe downhill. Um, so, and then when I was, I think, 16, I had to choose between downhill and cross country and uh, in XC you have a lot more support because it's an Olympic sport yeah. and it's pretty hard to be a downhill racer coming from <laughs> Israel. Um, so uh, I, I still don't know why and how, but I did chose XC uh -huh. uh, and I did that for about eight years, uh, raced World Cups and tried to get to the Olympic, didn't, mm -hmm. didn't make it eventually, but uh, always... When I always, when I was at the races, I always looked at the downy races and I was like, wow, I wish <laughs> it, it was always my dream uh, to do it. And actually, when I first signed with the GT, I told them that that's actually yeah. my dream. I, I mean, a bit of a coincidence in cross country and a bit of coincidence in enduro, mm -hmm. and downy was always my dream. Uh, so I, I have no idea why I <laughs> I did all this long way to, to get there. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, always wanted to do it and was supposed to do it uh, first year with GT and then things didn't work out as we hoped. Uh -huh. So it took some time. And yeah, eventually, I think, was it Leger? My first? Oh, I can't remember if it was Leger, my Not first sure, year. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, maybe it was here. In town here. It's a yeah. good, good place to go for your first one. Yeah. It's such a good track. It was uh, a bit faster. Like the top was pretty fast. Yeah. And uh, it was a bit overwhelming, but it was so cool to, yeah, so cool to be part of it. And I was very, very excited. Also, like Wynn told me last minute, like, hey, why don't you race Leger? I was like, hmm. Okay. That's a good question because <laughs> we had an enduro right after. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, just did it without really uh, practicing on the bike and stuff, but it, it just worked out and yeah. I even qualified. So that was really, really cool. Yeah. And yeah, I think I was a bit better when I was younger and had no fear. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that changes, huh? For yeah, sure. I, I, yeah, I do feel it a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely more scared than before. Uh -huh. Like I used to be the first one to do the jumps and now I'm like, oh my God, do I have to do it? <laughs> yeah, can I send someone else <laughs> yeah. over that first? <laughs> I have to see a couple of girls do, the, do it before <laughs> I do. So yeah, yeah. so that that's basically, yeah. Yeah, and you, you've you like formed a good friendship with our uh, two-time uh, elite <laughs> female world champion, Valley Hall. Yeah. How did you guys end up like hanging out together? Because you've spent a lot of time together in the last few years. Yeah, true. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Like, I just remember uh, Cecile said when she was racing downhill, she said there is this little crazy girl, Vali, that she's super cool. And then I met someone who's super quiet and I was like, well, Cecile said she's cool, so she must be cool. Because yeah. Cecile, I mean, the queen, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then I met her in a few races and we just become friends through, yeah, just we're riding together. Yeah. And yeah, just started to hang out more and more and it was pretty cool. And I actually uh, drove together with her from Lunanville to here. Nice. And uh, I told her it's very cool to see the valley she is now because two years ago we met here. Yeah. And she was a completely different valley. I don't know if she's going to kill me that I say it. <laughs> but we, we met for coffee and she was like, I don't know how many years I want to do it. Oh, I don't really like it. It's like, ah, it doesn't work. Ah, it's not fun. La, 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 la. And I'm like, how can you not enjoy? I mean, you have everything. You have super supportive team. And 
somehow she managed to switch yeah. and yeah to find the joy and to me to see it from the outside it's really cool the different I mean it's the same place so it's like the different between these two years it's uh, really made me very happy yeah, to I see bet. it and I think she's in a very good place and I think she has the right people around her so it's cool to see it from yeah from from the side yeah definitely yeah she's on a real like strong performance year hey? yeah. like just seems to be clicking into place finally like the valley mm -hmm. that everyone I think expected to see yeah there was a lot of weight on her shoulders coming exactly. from junior into a into elite and for her to go through that and be able to like deal with everything that went against her and turn mm. it around and come back to this is yeah is a so it's cool to see yeah i think for her it was very difficult to have all that pressure obviously she puts probably the most pressure on herself mm -hmm. but also yeah these days with instagram and there is so much pressure from the outside and yeah. you like you can speak to to your uh, like to someone you really admire you can just write him a message on instagram and there is no much distance yeah, so yeah. i guess it's very hard to get confused by that and like when sometimes people forget that they actually speak to human being <laughs> and when they write you a message on instagram you actually read it so i think that was pretty pretty hard to deal with and to just to find her own joy and to remember why she started which yeah. i think it's something that happens to all of us like all of us racers we have sometimes that we like our job more and sometimes less and sometimes it feels like a job and sometimes you're like wow i'm so lucky to earn <laughs> money from from riding bikes yeah so uh, i think yeah each one of us has it but i think because she was so famous so young yes then it definitely make her life made her life harder yeah uh but she totally nailed it and yeah i hope she just uh continue to to be happy and to yeah enjoy what she does yeah. and i think we see it on the bike we're definitely seeing it yeah. it's super cool yeah how how do you think that relationship has benefited the two of you um i don't know i never thought about, about it like that okay. um like have you learned think, from her or she learned yeah from you, for you know? sure yeah. i mean i i hate riding behind her because i <laughs> i don't even look at the trail i just look how how she rides and i'm like amazed about how pretty you can ride a bike. So I don't know if it's good for me to follow her because it's too dangerous. No, I'm joking. Um, it's, uh, it's yeah, for sure. For me, it's sick to have someone so good to, to follow and ride with. And yeah. uh, I guess she learns a little bit from me from, unfortunately, I'm pretty old right now. So uh, she can learn a little bit from the experience. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, sometimes manage to to be in a, in a good mood and... Uh, yeah, you know, like the the fun is fast uh, spirit. Yeah, and definitely. I think she 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 nailing it. <laughs> yeah, she's doing that for sure. Yeah, yeah, and you've always brought a bit of that thing. Like you've always got a yeah. smile on your face every time I see you at Trying a race. To. Like, <laughs> yeah, you seem to manage yeah, to keep, yeah. keep keep pretty buoyant. Yeah, Let's I definitely think it it makes you a better rider. I mean, I used to ride cross country, and uh -huh. I cannot say I was happy there. <laughs> uh, so I would say I've been in the less happy place and yeah. deal with less pleasant stuff uh, and I think when coming to Enduro I promised myself that I do it as long as I enjoy it okay uh, and obviously there is ups and down it's not like I wake up every morning and I'm like oh yeah I have four hour ride let's go <laughs> so it's not al always like that but sometimes you you know you get to the top of the mountain and you're just like wow that's cool that this is my job yeah it's pretty amazing so, sometimes hey? exactly so i guess for everyone is a bit ups and downs but you need to make sure that it's most of the time uh you're enjoying it otherwise yeah. it's better to to do something else it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to look at things yeah let's talk a bit about the start of this season so it was the first time that injury became a, a world cup which is cool like coming in mm -hmm. under that big world cup organization and you know having that title in front of it and we started out the season uh, in the southern hemisphere yeah big travel for everyone from uh this part of the world but like how, how was it how did you feel coming into the year i uh, i actually i never feel good coming to the year i okay. always have like in the last couple of years i always have some issues over the off season i uh -huh. had like few concussions started with a stupid road crash uh, -huh. uh first ever road crash in like 15 years that's no way. impressive well, uh, like fully of your own doing or were there no, cars I, or i was actually yeah it was only myself uh, uh -huh. my mistake i was uh on a road training camp with downhill girls with okay. uh, vali and nina oh, and nice. the other girls and uh um 
I don't know, I was just like chilling on the way down and suddenly found myself on the floor. No, no and way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> somehow. And it was, uh, I thought I'm fine and was just like suffering. And the yeah. girls were like, hey, I think you should, let's take a taxi back. And I was like, no, no, I came for a training camp, like full on, <laughs> like, come on, this season has to be good. And I was super motivated. And then when I got to the apartment, I saw the helmet is broken and oh, Vali is no. like, you got a concussion. And I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Luckily, uh, thanks to her and Greg, her physio, that used to be uh -huh. ours. Uh, I didn't row the next day. And okay. then I, I saw it took me some time to recover. So yeah. that's, that's a big thing. This it's concussion easy, thing. Easy to miss like those initials because yeah. you're probably not in a state of mind to be able to make sensible decisions really. If you yeah. Your head. That's the problem. Like exactly. It yeah. needs to be taken out of your hands almost like mm. it feels like they did a bit with you in that instance. Yeah. I think it's so important to always have someone next to you. Yeah. And that's why I don't like riding alone because you, you never know. And it's, it's really good uh, to have someone that knows how you are. And if yeah. he says you're off, then you, you're probably off. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's that's good, and there is some base base test I heard about. I, mm -hmm. I still haven't done it, but I think once I'm settled and yeah. uh, <laughs> without any concussion <laughs> symptoms, oh, probably I should uh, do it. Yeah. yeah, cool. So you came into the season with suboptimal preparation, would you say? Yeah, exactly. Like didn't felt super confident, and just had some ups and downs in the off season. Was yeah. sick a little bit, so yeah, didn't felt super confident, but I was okay with it, and. I, I still thought I can do, yeah, solid results. Yeah. Uh, so we had the first race in Medina, so I didn't know what to expect, and I was actually so impressed of the place. I mean, this is paradise. I mean, it's very it's very far, yeah. this little piece of paradise, but it's such an amazing place. Um, and I was, yeah, the trails were really sick. It looked incredible. And yeah. literally everyone I've spoken to that's been is like, you have to go to Medina. Honestly, it's yeah. like the other side of the world, completely other side. Yeah. But it's, wow, such a <laughs> paradise. And it's, yeah, I was just not expecting it because we were in Derby before two mm -hmm. times. Uh, but it's totally different. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed the place. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't remember already, but I think I was somewhere in the top 10. Right. Ninth, oh, you're you're better than me. <laughs> Good job. Uh, yeah, and uh, was like a okay start. Obviously, yeah. I always want to be in the top five, but these days it's, uh, it's this hard, game eh? is really really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. more like, so than ever before. Again, in in women's categories yeah. across downhill and uh, enduro, it's yeah. getting tighter and more packed mm. full of talent, which is awesome. But yeah, and the girls are just so fast. I I, yeah. I just cannot understand. How can they go so fast? Like, I don't know what they do that I don't do because uh, I do work hard. So I don't know, but like very, very impressive to see them yeah. going so fast. So it's it's also cool. I mean, it's not that I did 10 because I had a mechanical. It's just the other girls are so good. So yeah, it's there's, no, there's no room cool to be part of it. Yeah, there's no room for kind of error mm. or anything these yeah. days in the men's and the women's categories. I think it's pretty yeah, similar. True. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's cool because it, it used to be a bit like bigger gaps. Mm. Uh, so it's cool that it's very competitive these days. Yeah, yeah. nice. And then Derby, did you have another? Yeah, uh, like... I had a, another concussion. Yeah. Um, so I just had like a silly crash. Like I tried and uh, like I thought a better line. and uh -huh. This like, was in practice, right? Yeah, in practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, was it even the first? Maybe the first stage of practice. Okay. I'm not sure. No, maybe the third. Uh, anyway, uh, just had a silly crash in a pretty high speed section uh -huh. and crashed on the head. But it didn't. I didn't thought it's like bad because mm -hmm. I didn't crash on the head first. Okay. But maybe I don't know. Just like, coming to a know. stop quickly, I think, can yeah, like jar the exactly. brain in the skull or something and yeah. cause damage. Like it's mad. Eh? Yeah, and then I was trying to keep on riding and mm -hmm. I was like super unstable. Like I couldn't, I, I wasn't myself. I had to like yeah. walk sections, which I maybe on my first year I did that. Okay. So I was like, well, I have to like, you know, fo refocus and, yeah, yeah. you know, like try to be, to go for it. And I was like, well, I just finished the stage and then I watched the GoPro, whatever. And then actually Bex and Chloe saw me and they were like, are you okay? Like, you don't, <laughs> you don't seem to be like 100% good. I was like, yeah, I don't know, I crashed on my head. And uh, yeah, went back to the pit. Uh, luckily it was just there after the stage, so it was good. And 
Um, I was looking for uh, Greg, yeah. our ex ex uh, physio, uh -huh. and he was not there. And I found uh, Tara, who's uh, who was the Rocky Mountain team manager. Yeah, yeah. And she's uh, yeah super uh, yeah. She has a lot of experience with that. And she's like, if you're in my team, you don't ride for seven days. Okay. So there was a bit of a heartbreaking moment, breaking moment. Yeah, especially uh, so early in the season. Yeah, huh? so early and also like, I mean, I came all the way to Tazi and I'm not racing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was very hard. Yeah, so things did after that first block out in Tazi take a bit of a strange turn for yeah. you, which has created some, some challenges for the season. Like, yeah, I guess tell us a bit about how that happened, how you found out and... Yeah, yeah, so after that, I spoke to the team manager, uh, Cam Cole, and we planned to to do like a talk about these races uh -huh. and about the, the upcoming races. We were supposed to have a, a like a phone call to mm -hmm. to schedule all the flights. They wanted to do it early, and I came back home uh, and organized the national champs. So I had okay. pretty much two weeks yeah. uh, at home and until national champs, and. Then I got a message from the sport marketing. Anyway, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm super busy building the race village, like yeah, yeah. actually building. Yeah, like, so we should say for people that don't know, yeah. you and your partner run an enduro series out in Israel, right? Yeah, true. So yeah. Uh, Avi, my husband and I, we organize the Israel enduro series. Mm -hmm. So we usually have four or five races a year and one of them is national champs. Yeah. So that was in April, uh, just a few weeks after Tazi. Uh, so yeah, it was, I knew coming to the season, it was, it's going to be a bit st stressful, but yeah. I knew I focus on racing, then I'm focusing on national champs yeah. and I had like those two months to Yeah, the timing kind of race. fits. Yeah. yeah so it was gap. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not ideal. It's never ideal, but, uh, it's, it's good enough. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I got a message from the sport marketing, uh, guy and he just wrote me do you have time to talk I'm like well I'm building the race village <laughs> as you know uh, but if it's urgent yeah just call whenever and then they called in the evening the day before practice so I was like all out <laughs> like putting the flags in the place and like yeah it was pretty all out yeah and they just like we terminate your contract so it was uh, him and uh, Cam Cole the mm -hmm. team manager and I was like you what? Like it took me a second to understand what it even mean. Like you, you what? And then I realized, and I was like, "Are you joking?" Because they they used to prank sometimes and right. do like that's some, a hell of a prank if that's some, a prank. Yeah. Some boys club stuff. Uh -huh. So I was like, hmm, "Maybe." Like, are you joking? Like, and he's like, "No, I'm not joking." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> Absolutely shocked. Yeah. Like. And I mean, all of that the day before practice of national champs. Right. And two weeks before my wedding. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that was great. They were actually even invited. So I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. It's not like they didn't know about it. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a very painful moment. Uh, I mean, I had uh, like, yeah, 10 employees. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah. I knew it might happen. It's okay. Yeah, take your time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I had. Well, maybe I need a second. You're all right. Yeah. Take whatever you need. It's a big one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> In your time. Yeah. Yeah, so at uh, National Champs, we had like, I don't know, 10 employees working for us uh -huh. and like to work with them right after this talk was, you know, like yeah, it was... straight back into it, right? Yeah, you, can't, exactly. you can't stop. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't. And I didn't even told my parents or anyone, like yeah. just some people heard the talk. So they, they re realized what happened and I was like, oh my God, I don't have a job. I mean, that used to be my hobby. The, yeah. Like the Israel Enduro Series, unfortunately, it doesn't make money, but it used to be my hobby and I yeah. could, uh, could do it while I still get a salary. But I was like, oh my God, now, like, what should I do? I mean, and I was, yeah, it was really, really hard to to accept it. And 
under all the stress of the race and the wedding. Yeah, organizing later. a wedding is not exactly <laughs> unstressful, is yeah, it? Yeah, like... I don't know if you ever heard or saw an Israeli wedding. No, Israeli they, wedding is it a, a big, big deal? It's a big deal. <laughs> well, we didn't do like the religious stuff, okay, but yeah. just we just did the good part, just the yeah. party. And uh... but that's a lot of work, right? Yeah, like, it's I a lot of work. I remember how stressful the week before our wedding was. Like, yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, exactly. So there is a lot going on, and we had a lot of guests. So. Yeah. Uh, like Israeli weddings are like between 300 and 500 people. No so, way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's, that's a, it's that's a, big a big party. party yeah. <laughs> exactly. So obviously you want everything to be perfect. And yeah. then I, yeah, basically came to the wedding with this feeling, as you can see. Yeah. Uh, so that was very hard. I think I probably cried for the next two months every single day probably oh, until no, yeah. i arrived to finale <laughs> yeah it's tough to deal with pretty, eh? pretty hard yeah yeah so how do you yeah how yeah. do you <laughs> i mean in and in and amongst all of that right you've got yeah. the national chance to do all right that's out of the way relatively quickly i guess yeah then you've got your own wedding which like we say is yeah quite a there bit was, to deal uh, with yeah um, <laughs> a like, big one yeah how do you oh and then there was another race we another organized. one yeah yeah oh, so no it was way the national champs <laughs> two and a half weeks yeah. the wedding and two weeks after the wedding there was an, another national race so you're flat out life you don't get yeah. a break right like you can't and just the week turn later is finale already yeah so how do you <laughs> yeah how do you regroup both personally mm -hmm. like pick yourself up yeah and also get to a point well a to decide whether you're gonna continue racing mm -hmm. or not this season yeah. but then finding everything you need to go and do that yeah i think there was uh i don't know if the hardest thing but a very very hard few months like these two months of yeah. this craziness and it's mixed with happiness and sad and all of it together uh luckily i do have amazing people around me uh, avi my husband mm -hmm. and my family is very supportive and i actually this year started to train again with my cross country old cross country uh, cross country coach yeah, yeah. Uh, that he actually pretty much taught me how to ride a bike i mean Sweet. i started racing because of him yeah and i trained with him eight years before and then i had a break a few uh -huh. other coaches and it was pretty cool to go back racing with uh, training with him because yeah. he knows me probably better than my parents <laughs> um so I think I was pretty lucky to have him because uh, he knew when I need the break and he knew when it's like, hey, if you want to race this year, yeah, that's time to work. Yeah. Like you cannot keep on like, you know, be depressed at home. Like if you want to race in finale, yeah. this has to happen. you have to, yeah, you yeah. have to go racing. And he, he did have to do a few talks like okay. that. That's cool that he and, knows you well and enough to so do that. And he was so good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because it was that point of like, well, I need to decide if I'm racing yeah. I go all out and I train yeah. and if I'm not, I just stop. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I realized that that's not how I want to finish my career. And I was uh, like, I'm not planning to ride for 10 more years. So it's like, let's say um, I knew I'm not going to continue for longer, uh -huh. for too long. Yeah. Uh, but still I'm racing abroad since I'm 17. And yeah, I don't think that, that should be anyone's way of stop racing. Yeah, agreed. So, yeah. It's so not the I way was, to go out, is it? Yeah, exactly. And I knew yeah. I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like I used to be like, yeah, when I'm 30, I don't want to, now I'm already 32. Uh -huh. So <laughs> maybe now I should say when I'm 40, I don't want to yeah, look back yeah, and yeah. say Look like, at Minna, right? Still yeah. going. It's all good. Yeah. Well, he had a, bit, a few, uh, one or two more achievements than I did, but uh, yeah, he's uh, very impressive for sure. Yeah, he makes me feel guilty. Action. I've always used age as an excuse, but he doesn't know. Yeah, there yeah, he is. He destroys it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's not cool for him. <laughs> you, sh you should talk to him about it. We need it. to sort him out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but yeah. was it? Did it take long to make that decision to say to yourself, right, I'm not, I'm not going out like this. Let's, let's go. That's. Wow, I don't even remember. I just, like, in the beginning, I was very angry. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think it was a few times that I had to, like, am I racing? Am I not? What's the point to yeah. race? Like, yeah. I think it, it was, like, a few days, and sometimes I was just going on the bike, and I'm like, well, I'm just going to, like, you know, do my best and race, and hopefully I can do even better, you know? Yeah. 
And then other days I'm like, what, what's the point? I mean, it's like, you know, go, go full gas in neutral, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit of like, like yeah. And it's, and it's hard when you obviously, I started as a privateer, like everyone else. Yeah. And then when you're full on factory team and you basically have everything, uh, obviously there is always advantage and disadvantage, but yeah. you didn't have to care too much about logistics, about uh, like your bike usually yeah. works and yeah. you know like it takes a lot of the weight off your shoulders yeah. hey let's, you basically let's need to, deal to with. mainly to ride your bike yeah uh so it it was a bit scary for sure to decide to to go privateer yeah again and i did try to email some people and see if there is any chance to join a team one way or another but yeah. I, yeah, I was not surprised that all the email I sent were, yeah. uh, the answer was no. Mid-season, that's pretty hard, right? Yeah, and yeah. also I'm I'm aware of the situation. I mean, yeah, the bike yeah, industry okay. is not at these yeah. uh, best days, so. No, it's not at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like uh, one of my calls was, like the sentence was like, it's definitely the worst year to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, thank you. That's a good you. summary, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, it was the worst one probably. Yeah. Maybe next year could be worse. Mm. Um, and yeah, and then uh, after the wedding, I started to send more and more emails. Uh, I think before the, the wedding, all the emails I sent were negative. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> like the answer was negative. Uh, and then in one point, uh, an Israeli brand uh, named Joe's No Flats, they okay. do sealant and Yeah, yeah. I didn't know uh, they were lightning. Israeli. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. are. They're a really, really cool brand. Yeah. I always wanted to work with them, but uh -huh. never had a chance. Uh, they sponsor the Israel Enduro Series. Yeah. So I know them pretty well. And I called them. I was like, okay, guys, that's what happened. I really need your help. And they were like, well, we maxed our budget and I know they obviously pay to the series so yeah. i know they they do spend some money on the bike in this like on the yeah. uh yeah on the races yeah and they were like okay give us some some time and we we'll let you know and they were like the first one to put some money in and i was like okay and actually that was the point that from from there it was just good answers yeah. and strange like strange how it every, just turned huh? it's really it was crazy yeah. and it was just before I think Novomesto World Cup. So yeah, nobody okay. answered the emails for yeah. a while. And then suddenly after they said yes, like they're gonna help. Obviously it's not a massive amount, but it's it got me covered for the first first race at yeah. least. And yeah, so from there on, uh, I got uh, DT Swiss uh, helped me out with wheels, mm -hmm. which that's a big thing because uh, in Enduro, uh, you need you need that support, and yeah. I used to ride DT Swiss when I was a privateer, so okay. that was super cool. Yeah, and then Shimano were keen to help me with the part support, which is perfect. Yeah, yeah. the perfect thing. I mean, yeah. I ride Shimano since two thousand eight. Yeah, they saved a lot of my races, so <laughs> I was like stoked. And then yeah, slowly it just got better and better. And yeah. the, um, the Israel Premier Tech the mm -hmm road professional team yeah uh they helped me out to cover the expenses wow and then somehow thanks to valley salbach uh, yeah uh, hooked me up and no way yeah and Amazing. now uh michelin uh, yeah. tires are on board and okay. it's just like every i don't know every couple of weeks or months somebody else joined and yeah. fox suspension helps me out as well so 100 uh percent -huh. with clothing so yeah just like honestly, like every every week, it was someone else, and that gives a lot of uh, motivation. And just like to see, I'm not I'm not alone, you know. Yeah, and yeah. like to get some support from the industry, and in, especially in these days. Yeah. I mean, it's not for me. It's not obvious because yeah. I I am I know what's going on. Yeah, so. it's hard for brands to find yeah, extra money. Exactly. But it's cool that people especially want in the help. middle of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm. no one's expecting it, right? So yeah. yeah, it's definitely a tricky place to be. That must have exactly. started to make you feel good, though. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There was like Lift the, the point that I'm like, okay, I'm back, back yeah. on track, and yeah. uh, I still didn't have a frame sponsor. Yeah. Uh, there were a few brands I was talking to, but no one had a frame so quickly. And I knew I go to finale um, with the old uh, GT bikes I had. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I knew I I didn't want to race the the enduro bike. Yeah. Yeah. So I I liked the the trail bike okay. pretty much, yeah. and uh, I it's pretty like, um, 
let's say, a bit of a risk to okay. take a trail bike to an enduro race. Yeah. Uh, it was, I think, 140 at the, in the back mm -hmm. and 150 in front. Yeah. Uh, so it was a bit of a, a risk, yeah. but uh, I said, well, um, you know, it's a team improvised, so uh, <laughs> let's go. Um, yeah, so I just went to Finale uh, knowing I'm racing these bikes. Like I was lucky enough and Karina Capellari, yeah. uh, she borrowed me her car. So <laughs> that was cool. It was full on team improvised. So she was the team manager for, for a while. <laughs> nice. And that was cool. Yeah. And yeah, just came to Finale fully like, like nobody knew what's going on. Yeah. Because uh, I was not really allowed to say much. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone were like, why you're not with the team and you know it was super awkward that's, to yeah, see that's the horrible team there. to sort of have to have those conversations oh, it was as well. so hard yeah. yeah especially to see the team like that was painful yeah they created those uh, pink jerseys uh -huh. and that was supposed to be for me because from day one i asked for the pink oh, jersey no. and then i see them with the pink jersey that were like oh my god that's painful that's brutal so that was hard yeah uh, definitely hard but i was lucky that avi uh kind of uh stopped working for a while and nice. joined me for the races so i was very lucky thank yeah, you avi props to avi yeah <laughs> yeah that was uh, definitely the the coolest thing yeah. that he could join that was a That's good amazing. experience to do together yeah. yeah so you practiced at pietra on the trail oh, bike yeah. it's pietra too yeah and yeah. then there was a conversation with Colin Sal. Exactly. So <laughs> I saw them over there and obviously I tried to reach them out, but they were like pretty busy yeah. and we didn't manage to talk. And then we just saw each other in Pietra. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, come by after practice and we talk. And then Cecile wrote me a message on Instagram. Get ready to ride a real bike. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And I was like, what does she mean? <laughs> I'm like, maybe she knows something I don't. Okay, went to that meeting uh, right after practice, like super quick. Um, and it was, uh, the schedule was, I think Friday was uh, practice, mm -hmm. Saturday off, Sunday was the race. Yeah. Uh, so we did have the day off. Um, and yeah, met with them and they were like, okay, so we have this one frame in Nice. We can drive, bring it, and we build a bike for you overnight. And I was like, wait, you, you want me to race it already like <laughs> this week? I was like, oh, wow, that's, uh, I don't know. You know, like I usually don't, wouldn't even change grips or yeah, like handlebar because yeah. I'm super, like I, I need, need it to be the same as I train. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, you know what, whatever, team improvise, let's go. And it was the, uh, the V5, they yeah. haven't launched it yet yeah. at that time. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Like I always been curious and I think they're a really, really cool brand. And yeah, just uh, <laughs> gave it a go. Uh, they called me at like 4 p.m. And yeah. they were like, okay, the bike are ready. We pick you up. Uh, we do some shuttling. I felt like a complete princess. There were like four of them in the car with the mechanic. No and way. And just like... So this is the evening out. before the race. That's yeah, 4 p.m. the <laughs> Friday, the Saturday before the race yeah. or Friday, I don't know. No yeah. way. So and you just went out with all the crew to like help you get set up and Exactly. So I still had the parts uh from my GT. Yeah. Uh so like the brakes didn't work because I think it was in yeah. Never mind. Like the brakes were like the probably the brake pads were okay, uh, dirty or whatever. Yeah. So it didn't work. So I went in the like first trail. Yeah. Five second in, I'm like, oh my god, this bike. Honestly, five second in, I'm like, this bike should be illegal. It's like too good. No way. Like so, I don't know. Like so sick. Yeah. And that I couldn't break. <laughs> so I had a bit of an almost. Um, yeah. And then just did the two or three run on mini Champery. Yeah. And I was like, well, let's just, let's just give it a go. Let's There go, is nothing yeah. I can lose at this point. And I yeah. uh, was like, yeah, it's for sure be better spirit to race with a bike. I know the people care about me and want to help. So yeah, yeah just gave it a go. And everyone were a bit shocked in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> They were like, wait, you race, you trained a different bike and now you're racing <laughs> this bike? Like what's it's going be a on? First, isn't it? I don't think many people yeah. have trained and raced on, the, on different a brands. Different, like, yeah. 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 Okay. I'll take Wild. that. So what, like, what was your attitude coming into that race? Was it anger? Like, I want to prove this. Was it like mm -hmm. no pressure? Like everything's been all up in the air. Let's just go and see what happens. Like, how did you, what was going on in your head? I don't know. I think a bit of everything. Uh, we always say no pressure, but 
it never works. Yeah, I mean, there it's, is. It's easy to say and hard to believe, isn't it? I don't think anyone start a race without pressure. Okay. I don't like even when we say it. I don't think it's possible because obviously you want to do your best. Yeah. So you put the pressure on yourself, but you you can be a little bit less st- stressed, maybe. But for sure. Yeah, but it's uh, it's not easy for sure. Um, I think it was a bit of everything. Of course, I wanted to prove. Of course, I wanted to, you know, first uh, first race to be on the podium and. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, not realistic, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, just wanted to be like top 10 and just to, to enjoy was yeah. the bigger part. Just to, you know, be back and really enjoy riding because yeah. it was a while since I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and it was really good. I had a horrible back pain because <laughs> the saddle was different uh, uh, no angles than yeah, I used to. You hadn't done any long pedals on it, right? No, You've just done some not, shuttle runs. Not even, not even uh, ten minutes, yeah. like nothing. So yeah, my back was absolutely fucked. Sorry about <laughs> it. Um, but other than that, I had so much fun, and I was like so impressed about what why it was basically just a frame and the wheels mm-hmm. were different, and all the rest was the same. And I was like. I didn't even know it could be such a big difference. Yeah. And it was so cool. And yeah. And then I was like, okay, there we go. That's a fresh start. Eighth place. Yeah. In that field in 2023 on a bike you've done three runs on (laughs) and never pedaled on. Yeah. That you mean you gotta be you gotta be pretty happy with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I was I was happy. Yeah. I mean, I always want more. I mean, yeah. I'm a of course racer you're an, in my blood. Athlete. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was very very happy with it, and especially yeah, happy to work with the commensal family. Like they made me feel like in one day they made me feel like part of the family, and nice. I thought we will have to be like full on privateer, you know, like out of the parking lot to i don't know you know like to um to yeah just be on our own and suddenly i had a a pit with a coffee machine and a party after after the (laughs) race and it was like everyone helping me out and a mechanic and it's actually so cool and then i realized commensal have this uh privateer support uh so they have a tent for Mm -hmm. all the privateer riding commensal Ah, and actually everyone can use it and it's so cool to just have a brand that put so much investment in in the privateers because yeah. it's, well, it's the you, future right I yeah because you but, just buy a commensal and you go yeah. there and you you have somewhere to leave your stuff yeah. and a mechanic if you need some help so uh, that's cool i, didn't I was realize very they stoked. Did that. yeah yeah i didn't realize too and i yeah. told them how come you never publish it like yeah they never say anything it's just it's just there and crazy yeah. Hopefully now they'll start, but it's so super cool. Yeah, very yeah. cool. So yeah, you come off the back of that eighth. You've got this new bike. I'm guessing you want to try and get a bit of time on it before the next mm. race because there, was there a week gap between that and Leah Gang? Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, so we went uh, riding a bit in a few bike parks uh, and then we went pretty early to uh, Leo Gang Salbach because yeah. uh, we we could stay at uh, Valley's house. Uh, of course, my my sponsor Valentina yeah, yeah, yeah. Home. Thanks, Valley. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Valley, and Mama and Papa. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we stayed uh, we stayed there. So yeah. that was cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, rode a bit and yeah. Was it easier coming into that next race because there's less questions to be answered? Like people are more aware of what's going on. You've had some time mm, on the bike. Yeah. Did you feel more comfortable? Yeah, I think. Especially like not having to explain everyone what's going on. Yeah, I think that was a bit easier. Like Pietro was super hard mentally. Yeah, to deal with. Um, so that was better. And then yeah, I had quite a big expectations from from that race because uh-huh. I was like, wow, well, I'm riding with one of the best bikes out there. I'm already used to it, so I really, really wanted to do well. Yeah, and yeah, I was a bit disappointed to be honest. Okay. Um, because I'm like, I already felt like I know the bike in Pietra yeah. after not riding it. Because it's just like super easy to get used to. Um, and then I thought, well, in, in Lörgang, Salbach, I should be, it should be good. Like, yeah. And uh, yeah, just, uh, I was just a bit too slow. <laughs> or okay. the other girls were too fast. Uh-huh. I don't know what's the answer. Do Probably you think a bit you, of both. Do you think like that, the, the stress and everything that came with that, period from when you were told to when you kind of came back to the racing do you think not well the stress is 
on your body and on your system, right? You don't mm. have as much capacity to train. Yeah. You had a lot going on and, yeah. and all of that. Do you think maybe you lost some fitness and some sharpness through that? I think I always live with the too big of uh, stress in my body. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I do that a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, like I have a lot of stress because I'm always, I like to do one million things and that's probably my biggest problem as an athlete <laughs> that I like to do too many things. Yeah. So I always struggle to actually recover. Okay. But that was definitely next level with yeah. everything, with the happiness and uh, like with the good things and the bad things. Uh, yeah. That was definitely next level, even for myself. <laughs> uh, and also a lot of energy of like, finding those new sponsors and getting it all sorted and yeah like everything was definitely a struggle and not ideal and also to get used to it that i need to take care of stuff i mean mm-hmm. i used to uh you know finish training and go back the next day and i have the suspension serviced and everything and now i have to like take off the suspension give it to fox they're like uh super super helpful yeah. and they they do the service but still to put it back in and then choose the tires and I had like few options with tires so I didn't know which which brand I should choose and yeah, I was yeah. like it was like pretty pretty hard to decide things um yeah, there's more mental and physical load on you I guess yeah, right yeah and usually you do that in the off season like yeah. even if the team swap tires tire brands or whatever yeah, you, you test it all. you test it yeah. and I already did, did that with yeah. with the other uh, like with the team and yeah. then uh, then I had to do it all over again <laughs> between like three brands. So I was like, wow, that's a bit overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but yeah, eventually, may, well, I never know. Like, I don't know if it's an excuse to say like. But, You're not the sort of person to make an excuse, I'm sure, but like <laughs> it's not going to have helped, is it? Yeah. Yeah. The bottom line was that, yeah, I wasn't fast as I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, as I said, like the other girls are super prepared. They they didn't they didn't took any time off and they yeah. just worked so hard. So obviously you said no room for mis- for mistakes yeah. and there is actually no room for mistakes and you need to have a pretty dialed off season in order to perform in the first block of racing. And I yeah. had almost like two off seasons, I would say, and both of them didn't work out well. <laughs> so I was definitely a step a step behind yeah and at least from where i wanted to be yeah um seventh place still a solid result and seventh yeah. in val faster as well i think yeah true yeah uh so actually val di Fassa was a funny one because i was like okay val di Fassa is my race um i i have to be on the podium <laughs> i'm like now it's time to go back to the podium it's been a while but okay that will be my race i love this place it- italy such yeah. good vibes good food uh, the sun was out most of the time. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that would be my my race. Uh, then obviously it started raining. Um, but I was like, okay, okay, I can I can I can be okay with the rain somehow, yeah. like sometimes it, it works out. And yeah, it was uh yeah, in a really good mood. Then I had a stupid crash in practice. I still don't know if it was a small concussion there uh, or okay. not. Um but yeah, anyway, did the race and at the longest stage, uh, I finished fourth. But then few people told me, oh my God, you're fourth. So I was sure I'm fourth overall. Okay, yeah. And only after the race, I realized I was fourth on the stage. Oh no. <laughs> but I came into the last stage knowing I'm fourth. Yeah. And there was this uh, new uh, thing when they- uh, They recede. Yeah, yeah recede. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, and then I'm like, wait, I should be fourth. <laughs> What's going on here? So imagine <laughs> I'm like full on, okay, I'm going to send it the last stage. I want to be on the podium. Yeah. I think there were only a few seconds. Like it was achievable. Yeah. And I was like, I go all out. And then I'm like, wait, I'm not even... Uh, I'm not even fourth. <laughs> like, what's going on here? So I was standing on the line, realizing I'm sixth. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, fully confused, didn't know if I oh, should no. send it or not. And I was like, okay, never mind. I'm yeah. just gonna send it anyway. Yeah. And uh, had a small crash, so eventually finished finished seventh. Yeah. 
and was pretty <laughs> mentally broken from this one. Uh, no, yeah, that's hard eh, to have felt yeah. like you're on with a you know a good shot at the podium to then yeah have that. Well, at least I thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I I never ride with a phone because okay. uh, usually the Sunday is a work day in Israel, okay. and I don't want to get <laughs> one million messages, <laughs> so I I never ride with the phone. Okay. So. Uh, I usually don't know the results. Like yeah. sometimes I hear or I look, uh, but this time I was just, yeah, trying to focus on racing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was di pretty disappointed disappointed to find out I'm uh, seventh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, still got to be happy that, I mean, top 10 these days, it's It's a really good not, result, yeah. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, but just, yeah, I just wanted more. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Story a rough, of my life. <laughs> a, r a rough second block of racing. Yeah. But you got through it. Yeah, And then true. we've had, which maybe was a really good thing, this kind of true. unusual long summer off for, yeah. <laughs> uh, for the discipline, right? Like how have you capitalized on, the, on that summer break? Because it must have been actually a bit of a godsend. Yeah, so I went home for a couple of days uh, just to like uh, – reset a bit not really because i had a lot of things to do at home uh -huh. so it's always like a little bit of a reset but also a lot of work uh and then i was actually here in morzin for the summer okay um and that's when i realized i maybe had a concussion in uh cannot say because uh -huh. i had full-on concussion symptoms uh, no but way. the other hand i was okay ish at the race yeah so i it it was like pretty weird but for two weeks i was absolutely like I couldn't, I couldn't ride. I couldn't ride the bike park. I couldn't, if I would look backward and then look back yeah. uh, to the front, I was like completely dizzy. And it was like all the, pretty much if I would tell you, you would say yeah. like, oh, concussion. it's a concussion. Yeah. But then I was like, how can it be? So it was super strange, but maybe it's also the stress you were talking about. Who knows? Yeah. Body yeah. can do funny things. Hey? Yeah, exactly. So you never know. Yeah. So anyway, uh came here with, yeah, really wanted to, okay, that's time to work. Yeah. And then had to pretty much rest for two weeks. And then slowly it started to to get better. Okay. Uh, so Avi, my husband, worked here for an Israeli tourism company. Ah, nice. So he had to be here for the summer. So yeah. it it went out, worked out pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was lucky enough to to have a proper place for practice. And yeah. Israel is pretty hot in uh, July, <laughs> August. So you don't want to be there unless you go to the beach. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was really, really stoked and got to ride with a lot of fast people around here. So so that was cool. Yeah. Uh, went in the, like in the last couple of weeks, went to Switzerland, to Lux, to okay. hang out with my favorite twins. Yes, because uh, they've got they a were, place out there, yeah, like a bike true. hotel thing, is yeah. it? Yeah, uh, it's it's called the Flem Lodge. I hope okay. I pronounce it correctly. They're going to kill me otherwise. <laughs> um, and it's a really, really cool uh, bike uh, lodge. Yeah, yeah. And obviously the best coffee. If you know the of twins course. good enough, you, you know it's going to be the best coffee. Yeah. And yeah, just like, probably the best place to be for a mountain bike vacation. So yeah. uh, there was a Swiss Enduro race. So I did that. I thought uh -huh. it would be a good preparation and good times with the girls. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, in the middle even uh, visited uh, Natalie Schneider, who just won world champs uh, e-bike. Yeah. So that was cool. Nice. Yeah. So it was a little yeah. uh, vacation from the Morzin uh, craziness. Yeah. And yeah, was uh, here for the last week and then, Back home, actually, because this season hasn't been crazy enough. <laughs> so I was back home for my baby brother's wedding. Okay. Uh, so I have two brothers. So yeah. the younger one decided to get married a couple of days before Ludenville. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Good schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I had I was uh, home for about a week. Yeah. And uh, flew really last minute uh, to Ludenville. So uh, the wedding finished at like. 3 a.m. on the Wednesday and 7 a.m. we were already on the plane. Whoa, perfect so, prep for a race. Exactly. I mean, what can go wrong? <laughs> so, yeah, luckily I had a lot of uh, help and support. Uh, Morgan Schar took my stuff uh, nice. from here to yeah. Ludonville and uh, Comensal prepared my bike. I sent it to them and they could they prepared it. So yeah. I was very, very lucky to have like I, I'm just feeling super lucky to have all these amazing people around me. That's ace. In a way, like one door closes and many others have opened, right? You yeah, get to see exactly. the compassion and the support of some awesome humans, exactly. which is, is yeah. nice. Eh? There's some cool That's people very, around. Yeah, definitely touching and it was a very 
like very fun and yeah like beautiful thing to see that yeah. how amazing the mountain bike community is and definitely these two months were one of the hardest of my life mm -hmm. uh but the outcome uh of it was good if i could just keep the pain of the of <laughs> yeah. these two months and the uh, destroyed of uh, self confident and self image then uh it would be, it w I would say they did me a favor, but yeah, yeah, yeah. hard to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hard exactly. to take the pain to yeah, get the exactly. benefits, but yeah, it yeah. sounds like some good hard things. Hard to get over it for sure. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but yeah, now definitely happy and uh, yeah, very thankful for yeah. all the people who helped me out because yeah, that's a big thing. I like it. So feeling good coming into Ludenvia then? Yeah, felt good. Like I knew i i'm a bit of uh yeah a little bit too much alcohol in my blood and maybe a little bit lack of uh, <laughs> sleep i mean my brother i mean it's my baby brother hopefully he gets married only once so yeah, i had to be, be there yeah. yeah that's something i always said like i would never miss like a wedding of a good friend of, yeah. or one of my family members so i'm happy i did that yeah and uh, yeah i came to the race and i told avi on the way there i was like just remind me the race is on saturday and don't be stressed about it because there is still a couple of days to go maybe practice not but for the race day i should be fine yeah and then we get there and there is those rumors saying that maybe they're gonna schedule the race for the day before because yeah. there is a big storm coming and i'm like oh <laughs> my god please not <laughs> Obviously, that's what happened, and which was a good decision for everyone, just yeah, not for yeah. me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, the race was on the Friday instead of the Saturday. Yeah. So I didn't have much time to sleep or rest. So it was like, I don't know, like 50 hours after the wedding, I was already racing. No way. Um, yeah, but was trying to come with like super good mood. And I said like, it is what it is. And you can always do like, sometimes you start training and you're tired and you have a good training. So yeah, I was in that mindset. And then uh, started the first stage and crashed pretty quickly. I think it's on the drone somewhere. Oh, really? I hope the ESO can find it. Yeah, yeah that would be sick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just crashed on a grass corner. So lost some time there. Yeah. And then... In one point, I had a like a bad cramp and a flat tire, uh -huh. and that was my stage one. <laughs> Brilliant! I was like, okay, maybe fun is not so fast after <laughs> all. <laughs> and yeah, I was really, really pissed off, and I was like almost willing to quit, but I was like, no way, I w I will never quit. Uh, but you know, this thought just go through your head, like yeah. maybe I should just quit. But yeah, ended up climbing up uh, to the second stage and I was like, okay, just put it behind, put a little bit more air in the, mm -hmm. in the tire, uh, a lot of plugs in yeah. and um, yeah, did a pretty good stage. Uh, I'm not sure how I finished, but um, if I'm not wrong, I finished fifth on the okay. second one. Yeah. Uh, and then we had a tech, tech zone mm -hmm. uh, so I could swap tire again and start fresh, had yeah. some coffee, so that always helps. And uh, yeah, started fresh and uh, had a bit of ups and downs with the uh, stage results, uh -huh. but finished uh, fifth. And fourth, I was so? four, no, I think fifth. fifth. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, yeah, the it's, other four but, but were faster. We're on the climb, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a climb, definitely. Uh, yeah, so I was like, when I saw bef at the feed zone, I, I looked at the results and uh -huh. I was like, okay, I was, I think, seventh. Right. But only like three or four seconds ahead. Okay. Uh, behind uh top five and i was like i have to finish top five i mean this is i have to be on the top <laughs> five and i got to the bottom and i was like so stoked i'm finally where i want to be yeah so it took some time <laughs> um yeah but eventually i made it and yeah. i was yeah very very stoked about yeah, it. yeah it must yeah. feel good to be back in that top yeah, five exactly. i know you want more but like yeah i mean you all yeah I guess we all want more, but yeah. uh, for sure this top five thing is is a big deal, especially now when the level is so high and after everything happened, yeah, um, it was a, a very a very good uh, yeah. It's like shows that hard work pays pays definitely, off. So definitely, yeah, and sticking cool. with it, right? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It's the grit and determination that you put in to keep going and yeah. to make it happen for yourself that pays back, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hard work though. Hey, so we're in Leger. Um, yeah. We've got this combined, it's the first like festival event, mm -hmm. I guess they're calling it. So we've got all the disciplines here. Um, and Enduro runs kind of next week in Chatel. Yeah, true. Um, which is not too far away. Yeah. And so it's the Haute Savoie region, I think. 
and we've had a few of these combined events. This is the first one in that format where there's mm -hmm. kind of no massive overlap between the enduro and, and downhill. We've had others, so Luden VA and Lear Gang, where the scheduling was kind of different and there was downhill and enduro going on at similar times. How are you finding this combined event stuff? Like, it's super nice to see everyone in the same spot. Like it's Ace having literally the whole sport here this week. But yeah, I guess it's a challenge. Like there's a lot of things going on. It's not always straightforward. And it also means that the people that were doing a bit of downhill, a bit of enduro and, and kind of combining struggle to do that. But yeah. yeah, how do you feel that's going? Because it's very different this year. Yeah, um, I think like when I first saw that Enduro becomes a UCI thing and like an actual World Cup, Yeah, I thought it's pretty cool. But then they published that it's combined events uh -huh. and we are on the Wednesday, like in Logang, for example. And I was like, oof, that doesn't seem to be like the right thing for Enduro. Okay. From what perspective? Like from a coverage perspective or? I think everything. Okay. Also, there were like barely people on the trails. Yeah, because okay. Because who can... You can't um, take Wednesday off work. to spectate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, it, I think it becomes a bit of a side event, uh -huh. which or like, um, you know, like the, the little show before the big show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's how it felt. And I guess um, you've, you, you know, you're used to enduro was always this thing on its own. So it was always exactly. the big show, right? Yeah, that's, that's how it felt. I mean, yeah. I, I came from cross country and yeah, I mainly raced uh, junior and under 23, only few elite races. And yeah. it's always like when you're a junior, you want to be under 23. When you're under 23, you want to be elite. And then when you're elite, you're like, oh, wow, I'm part <laughs> of the big show. And yeah. it's a big show. Yeah. And then came to Enduro and it was super cool. Like there were a lot of spectators and I did felt like we got better coverage every year. Mm -hmm. And I think the last year was pretty good already. And then they started those rumors about live uh, broadcasting. Yeah, for the like the pro stage and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And actually, that was I was sure that this year it's gonna start. Yeah, and uh, was pretty disappointed to see it didn't. Like okay. in Leogang, the we did the the finish of the DH. Yeah, and I thought the purpose would be because obviously it's not easy to to make it happen. So yeah. I thought the purpose would be that we can we can actually have a one stage. Yeah, uh, that's broadcast. televised. Yeah. Uh, and then we found out it's not, <laughs> uh -huh. okay. and we ended up at like 8 PM doing the last stage after waiting two hours at the pit. And the last stage is like a gnarly DH track. It's like the old DH, DH track. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it wasn't what I thought. Uh -huh. And I did thought that Enduro will take the heat a bit, a bit of the new, organization uh -huh. and i thought you know it's a bit of like enduro is the small brother and you know if somebody needs to take the hit it will be enduro because yeah yeah the money is where uh is in cross country and the age and yeah it would make sense but i was a bit surprised it went that more deep. of a hit than you thought yeah, yeah exactly okay. yeah yeah i think uh, it enduro took a big a big hit for yeah. sure yeah do you yeah. think it will recover from that do you think that as as the organization becomes more familiar, more up to speed with like everything they need to be doing with the live broadcast stuff that they'll be able to bring more focus back to the Enduro. Cause it felt like there Good was, question. like you say, there was that intention there. I think they try, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm factually correct, but I thought they trialed everything for a live broadcast pro staging in Leithen last year, maybe. Yeah. Like I thought they had some yeah, cameras and some technology and stuff. Yeah. So it was obviously, the, there was an intention there to do that. I wonder if that, is still on the table. Like that's a good question. I actually never had a chance to talk to any of the EWS okay. or ESO people. Yeah, uh, like that because uh, they seem to be pretty busy these days. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even know if they know. Like, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. There is some rumors. Uh, yeah, there's that always some rumors. Sounds though. like super bad for Enduro. So uh -huh. I hope they're not correct. Um, and I I do hope. Like I know from um. I organize super small races compared to uh -huh. to this, obviously. And I think it's, yeah, eventually it's all about money. Mm -hmm. And I think to broadcast one stage, it's not that hard. Okay. I mean, maybe to do it full on like the DH, maybe it's hard. Yeah. But I think they could do something 
or maybe we do the stage twice or uh -huh. maybe you know like they could find some solution of at least one stage yeah and also there used to be i think a, a bit of a better coverage overall and once okay. we kind of racing against the age and cross country we have no chance us mm. enduro yeah uh because yeah they are here for way longer and i mean dh is the formula one of mountain biking so or cycling i don't know yeah and i don't think we can ever compete with that and cross country is here for years so i think enduro should be on his own and it's okay to be under the uci and to be a world cup yeah uh but either to find a way to combine it better yeah with only like in ludonville it was a bit better but then uh -huh. the schedule change and la 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 so it was it was a uh, pretty hard eventually and yeah. and we did feel it like we raced on the friday and there were not so many people on track okay. and last year we raced there and there were like a lot of spectators so you could you could feel the difference okay um but yeah it's very very interesting to see what yeah. the future brings yeah it's sure. early days right for the new yeah. the new version of mountain bike racing yeah and, uh, exactly who knows what will change over yeah. the next few years personally i like the old version better okay. i think uh yeah we spoke spoke to some people i think 2019 was like pretty much the the peak you know yeah the <laughs> peak exactly yeah. and I, I hope enduro will be back there and hopefully there's another peak that's higher we just haven't seen it yet exactly that's what, in the what we hope so Fingers for the crossed. whole industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. So the, oh, it's been a tough year. Hopefully yeah. it's all on the up. It feels like you're in a good space. There's been, a, there's been more smiling than tears in the last <laughs> however long True. we've been sat chatting, which is a good thing. Um, True. Lessons learned? Like what, what do you feel you've learned from all of this? I think the biggest thing I learned is to never sign a contract without a lawyer approving okay. it. And also... Yeah, like I, I wish I could say more, but to young, younger riders, like just don't sign contracts just uh -huh. like that. Because sometimes like a big team comes to you and like, they're like, oh yeah, there you go. Like, this is the offer. And you would just sign it because it's like, oh my God, it's it's so my cool. dream to be yeah, a professional yeah. in a factory team. And it's not always, things are not always how they look like. And uh -huh. especially today with Instagram, every, everything, you, you think you know everything. Yeah, but most of the team I don't know all but obviously most of the team have their own issues and not every team fits everyone Yeah, and I think it's important to know what you're going into and to ask the right questions and so yeah if you're a, a junior or a beginner uh, signing in a contract make sure you yeah you ask yeah. someone who knows maybe ask other riders what they think Yeah, and yeah, I wish the industry would be a bit more fair. I was pretty surprised that there is no like rider representative or anyone who like the UCI doesn't defend riders. Okay. Um, and it was pretty sad to see that there is no legal um, depart departure at the UCI yeah. that actually take care of the riders. Okay. Uh, so I hope for mountain biking. I guess in cross country is the same because in in road you you have to follow certain rules and you uh -huh. have to like insure your riders and there is a lot of rules you have to do. Yeah. And in mountain biking, as far as I know, uh, there is not that many rules. And okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I hope uh, I hope uh, riders will check check their contracts a bit better. And yeah, I think I think that's the the biggest thing that I learned and mm -hmm. yeah, just to stay loyal to myself and, and yeah, do, do what I love and yeah, to enjoy, to enjoy what I do. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, tough year. Feels like we're coming out the end of it. Off season is rapidly approaching us. Mm -hmm. What are your plans? Like, how do you, do you want, are you like enjoying having this more ad hoc structure that you've put together? Do you want to get back towards that like factory team support? How are you thinking about next year? That's a good question <laughs> these days. Um, so yeah, to be honest, uh, when I signed my last contract with GT, I told them that would be either the last contract or I do one more year. Uh -huh. uh, so obviously after this messy year, I really want to do next year. Yeah. But I think if I do it, next year is going to be my last race, uh, my last year as a full-time racer. Okay. Uh, I mean, I haven't been home in 15 years for like actually being home. And uh, so I would, yeah, 
would love to start my new a new chapter uh-huh. uh but yeah before that i would i would love to do a full year of racing well with good people around me nice. um so i don't know if if these days we if a team would take me because i'm not uh, not gonna lie about okay. it uh, i'm yeah. just gonna do this one more season yeah uh i mean you never say never but that's that's the plan anyway uh-huh. um so yeah uh I don't know if a team would take a rider for one year, uh, unless they're very cool. If you are, let me know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm trying to build to build my own uh, program for next year or just a private year. Yeah. And we'll see. I don't know if Avi would be able to take all like so so much time off work, but I guess we go with the flow. A uh, team improvise is yeah, back on, I and like uh, yeah, hopefully we don't have to improvise so much this year, <laughs> and we can just uh, uh, just plan it in advance. Um, so there are some races we do in the off season in Israel, uh, which you should do four or five until after Chatel, between Chatel and the first, uh, yeah. EWS, or I don't know the name right now, uh, <laughs> ESO, uh, Enduro, whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really hope I can find, uh, some more partners that can help me out to, to do that season and finish yeah. my career on a high note. On nice. High. Where do people get in touch with you if they want to get involved? Like where's the best like dm on an instagram or yeah like, probably instagram yeah. or yeah i don't i don't think i should put my email no no, no that's fair <laughs> yeah enough. probably instagram yeah, would people, be if brands are listening and they're yeah. like oh, i'd like to see i'd be part of this story for next yeah, year yeah that would be sick yeah. i would uh, definitely love that nice and yeah hoping to yeah to find the right people to work with and cool. just to yeah to to give it my best and know that i finished my career uh after doing my best and giving it giving it all yeah good yeah, stuff that would be cool if people want to follow that uh season mm-hmm. where should they be looking what's is it at noga yeah so it's uh noga korem yeah all one word on, uh yeah on instagram yeah i'll stick yeah. links in the show notes to that oh, what if people cheers. want to check out the israel enduro series has that got a website so we, we actually don't have a website because okay. i did i did started to do a website yeah. on Wix, and then i saw i thought like who looks in a website everyone are on instagram on and facebook and, yeah. so yeah we do most of the communication through instagram and facebook okay. it's israel enduro okay uh so you can check that out and yeah. you guys are more than welcome to come and try one of our races it's nice. a bit of a i would say compared to europe it's a mini enduro but okay it's really good Fun. atmosphere and so. an interesting place to visit i'm sure like yeah i've definitely I never mean, been so yeah cool. then you should you should come it's there one of the sickest places for sure nice. i mean for me tel aviv is one of the nicest city yeah. in the world and israel is definitely interesting place and it's very different than what you think it is or what yeah. you see in the news so nice. i think that will be cool to visit yeah i'll put it on the list all right nice one Nigel. well thank you for sharing your story i know thank it's you. not necessarily been easy but i'm glad <laughs> exactly. to see you're in a good spot thank um, you i hope chatel goes well for you yes and that you have a good off season amazing. and i look forward to seeing you fired up and well supported for mm. uh what might well be the swan song but yeah yeah nice thank one. you so much thanks mate thank you Cheers. see you around <laughs>